up y'all welcome back for another movie reaction and today we'll be watching full metal jacket directed by stanley kubrick what i do know about this movie is that it stars a pretty famous let me hear your war cry scene and that it's a war movie and that's it before we begin i do want to remind you that you can get early access to these youtube edits on my patreon through the link in the description if not just make sure you subscribe and leave a thumbs up on this video if you do enjoy it it really helps my channel reach a wider audience and i greatly 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 appreciate it but now it's time for the show let's go I recognize that actor. That's Eleven's father from Stranger Things. From now on, you will speak only when spoken to. Sir. Sir, yes, sir. Bullshit, I can't hear you. Sound off like you got a pair. Okay, so this is a scene I've seen already. Nice. That you, John Wayne? Is this me? Who said that? Who the fuck said that? You see how angry and hot-tempered this guy is, and you're really just gonna fucking say something? What have we got here? A fucking comedian. Private Joker. Hell, I like you. You can come over to my house and fuck my sister. <laughs> what? <laughs> Holy shit. Now let me see your war face. Ah! Bullshit. You didn't convince me. Let me see your real war face. Ah! Wow. This scene is very different, especially that one seen in the full context that it's in. Shit. God damn it with my hand, numb nuts. Now lean forward and choke yourself. Are you through grinning? Is this Vincent DeForno? I'm watching Daredevil and he's he's Kingpin. Holy shit, is this him? Private Pile, you had best square your ass away and start shitting me Tiffany Cufflinks. Or I will definitely fuck you up. I think maybe this drill instructor has been doing this for too long. He seems pretty good at tearing people a new asshole. I don't think drill instructors can punch you in the gut anymore either. <laughs> oh shit. You're right. Yo, what? I mean, if that was that guy, I would have just left, man. There's no way. He's clearly not cut out. It seems he doesn't have the mental capacity to be dealing with all this. We are the masters of our enemy. We are the saviors of my life. Huh. Addy. This is intense already, man. This is... We're still in boot camp. This is my rifle. This is my gun. This is so fun. This is so fun. <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, as brutal as this may seem, and as over the top as I may think he is, this is really, really effective as making a group of people feel like a unit. It does work. You go through something like this together, that's your brother. Are you going to die on me? Do it now! Quickly, quickly, quickly. If Lawrence gets his act together and becomes like a great soldier, that'll be the biggest surprise I've ever seen in a movie because this guy just looks like he is not cut out for this at all. Now, you do love the Virgin Mary, don't you? So the private believes that any answer he gives will be wrong. I would snowball, you're fired. Private Joker is promoted to squad leader. Holy shit. He just got made squad leader because of that shit? All right, man. I'm glad for Lawrence. Let's go, man. Instead of a kick in the butt, they need a pat on the head, you know? The deadliest weapon in the world is a Marine and his rifle. They're training to be Marines? Oh, well, that explains it, man. This isn't typical army shit. This is the Marines. I will not punish him. I will punish all of you. One, two, three, four. I love Marine Corps. Damn, man, that's fucked. He's basically turning all of them against him. Like, nah, don't help him out. Like, I want you to hate him just as much as I do right now. If you keep making mistakes like this in training camp, you'll definitely make mistakes out there, and you'll get people killed, man. Is he gonna break out? Oh shit, they're gonna hit him with those fucking things. <laughs> they are done trying to be his friend. I do feel bad for him though, but I mean, if you're training to be a Marine, getting hit with soap and towel, like, shouldn't make you break down like that. 
that blue lighting and that eerie music, that was completely different than anything we've seen in the rest of the movie. It was almost sinister even. Do any of you people know who Charles Whitman was? Anybody know who Lee Harvey Oswald was? Do any of you people know where these individuals learned how to shoot? In the Marines, sir! Oh shit, I did not know that. Damn. I mean, thinking about it now, a lot of mass killings occur with people that have some type of military training. Not all the time. Outstanding, Private Pyle. I think we finally found something that you do well. Oh, he's a good shooter. All right, man. That's what's up. Marines die. That's what we're here for. And that means you live forever. Damn, I thought maybe this movie was going to take place in boot camp the way it's been shown so far, but they're graduating, we're moving on. I can definitely see this movie inspiring some people to join the Marines, for sure. It's that same sinister tone as when they were beating this dude with the soap. Oh, wait! I saw this scene when I was very, very young. He shoots himself in the head. I saw this part. Oh, shit, man. Oh, I didn't know it was from this. I didn't. I don't want to lie and say I haven't seen shit when I have, you know, complete transparency on this channel. Please understand that. Oh, shit, man. He looks fucking evil. You will place that rifle on the deck at your feet. Back away from it. Holy shit, man. I don't remember him aiming it at the fucking guy, though. Oh, shit! What the fuck? No, wait, maybe I... What? Oh, my God. What the fuck? No! Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's the scene I remember. Oh my god, that is fucking gross, man. You don't forget a scene like that. You don't forget someone shooting themselves in the head. So I remember that scene, but I don't remember like the context. I don't remember the drill sergeant getting shot. I don't remember him even being in the scene. You got girlfriend, Vietnam? Yeah. Well, baby, me so horny. <laughs> what? This is where me so horny comes from? Oh my god, yo. what the fuck was that? So this movie seems like not just a very acclaimed wartime movie, but one that's highly referenced in pop culture. I had no idea. A brawn intelligence says Charlie might try to pull off something big during the Ted holiday. I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. Every zipper head and numbs, barking at the moon, visiting his dead relatives. Damn, he just wrote off his concern like it was nothing. Definitely seems like that's gonna come back and bite them in the ass. Hopefully a lot of people don't get killed because of it. Maybe you should go out on some ops yourself. I'm sure you could find a lot more blood trails and drag marks. As it happens, my present duties keep me where I belong. Damn, man, that's some bullshit. They basically want them to fabricate stories to inspire morale and make it seem like we're not losing or getting our asses handed to us over here. You know he's never been in this shit because he ain't got the stare. Stare? Thousand yard stare. A Marine gets it after he's been in the shit for too long. Thousand yard stare, I've heard that term too. Oh shit, man, they're coming in, holy fuck. I mean, you think about it, how could you not expect that to happen? That's like the Viet Cong having a stronghold here, expecting us not to attack it at any point. I would always be on high alert, man. I, I want you to get straight up to Fubai. How's it gonna look if you get killed wearing a peace symbol? Damn, so is he sending them like into the heart of the fighting that's going on right now? Oh shit, yep, soon as I say it, they smash cut to the jungle. We heard some scuttlebutt, sir, about the NBA executing a lot of Gook civilians. I saw some buddies about a half a click this side of Fukam Canal. Damn, look at the look on his face. What is he looking at? He seems so upbeat and shit, and now he just looks destroyed. We are here to help the Vietnamese because inside every gook, there is an American trying to get out. It's a hardball world, son. We've got to try to keep our heads until this peace craze blows over. Damn, the colonel basically said in his way, listen, I know this is fucking bullshit. I know everything that's going on here is not natural, but a line has clearly been drawn, and you can't make people second guess whose side you're on. I'm a combat correspondent. Oh, you seen much combat? You're a real comedian.
Damn, this dude got bandoliers and a big ass blade on his back. Shit. Delta six, we are receiving income. Tenant is down. Stop here and check out what's in front of us. These helmets are amazing, man. They just offer so much personality to each person. I feel like there's a reason these helmets are on the DVD covers for this film. It's everything. It's their identity. noticing there isn't really too much music in this film man it's mostly either percussion or a string playing one note it's very very minimal almost like tribal you know like savage <laughs> Damn, I didn't even think of all the wartime that like pictures we see in real life and that are in books. There had to be people out there literally there just to take the pictures. You know, in the heat of combat, everything is going on. You gotta catch that shot. When everybody's head about the bed. Yeah, I mean, any music we've heard has only been like this, like soundtracks from music from this era, the Vietnam era, the 60s, I think. <laughs> What year was this movie? I mean, it couldn't have been too long after the Vietnam War. It's not like making it now where it's like 70, 80 years later. This could be like 15, 20 years later, man. This is... And it just gave a super realistic look. Go easy, bros. Better you than me. Better you than me. Fuck, man. War is hell. I mean, we're getting killed for these people and they don't even appreciate it. Well, if you ask me, uh, we're shooting the wrong gooks. This dude looks so badass with that big ass fucking light machine gun hanging on his shoulder in front of a tank. They're definitely gonna be using that shot. All fucking must fucking hang. Oh, hey, yo, man. It won't be long. I'll skip the foreplay. Just a racial slur is being dropped on a whim. This is this fucks with your brain, man. To be in a situation like this and to come out normal is not normal. Oh shit! Holy fuck, man, a little fucking rabbit? I did not see that coming, man. I'm sitting here talking about the people that could see the fallacies and the fuckery and bullshit and all of this. And then a fucking IED goes off just to reiterate the point like, yeah, man, did you forget? This is hell. Man, how did they get these shots, man? These fucking crumbled, destroyed buildings just on fire. I don't know if this is a set or whatever, but this looks like an actual war zone. Holy fuck. Like, I can smell it. You know, it, it feels like I'm there. I feel dirty just watching this shit. Just shows how easy it is, man. Get a promotion in a split second under the grimace of circumstances. Oh, man, just from this angle, you can tell something's gonna happen, man. You can just tell, bro, that wide shot. Oh, shit, man. Whew. He's covering a lot of ground by himself, man. That's some brave shit. Damn, man, this is intense, bro. What the fuck? Nobody fire till I tell you. Oh, shit. If they decide to hit us, we'll have to pull back fast. Oh, man, what the fuck? Holy shit. Let's get ready to move. There's only one fucking sniper out there. Come on, you guys. We got to go bring him back. Damn, man, emotions are just riding high, man. These people are making stupid decisions, man. Fuck. Holy shit, man. He almost took his fucking head off, man. No. No. That's not the way this works, man. That is not the way this works. Fuck all that. Ah, damn it, man. Y'all set? Yeah. Got it. Let's move out. Man, you don't know if there's people who's waiting in those buildings, man, just laying dormant, waiting for all of you to push so they could just hop out at once. Like, come on, man, use your brain, bro. Murphy, this is Cowboy, over. 
Oh shit! No man, damn! Damn man, he's like convulsing and shit, bro. What the fuck? He didn't even want to push in the first place, man. Of course, we can look back and say, oh, he should have took cover a little better. Should have saw his positioning. But look where he's at, man. Some more of that tribal music popping back up. Oh, shit. It's a woman. Oh, fuck, man. They just turned what I said earlier in this movie on its head. Nowhere in my mind did I think it was a woman shooting up there. And that's why people are the way they are. Because situations like this happen, this shit is all about survival. Can't just leave her here. I'm running this squad now. And I say we leave the gook for the mother-loving rats. I mean, is a mercy kill too much to ask? It's war, man. She was sent there the way y'all were sent there. Just put her out of her misery, man. Fuck. If you want to waste her, go on. His only confirmed kill, a dying young girl. Hardcore, man. Fucking hardcore. Seems like he's earned everyone's respect and admiration, but at what cost, man? I feel like a bit of his humanity just died there. I get he, he didn't want her to suffer, but damn, man. It's hell. It's war. You're a Marine, but you haven't seen any combat at all, and that's your first taste of actually killing someone? It's definitely going to imprint. <laughs> what? I am so happy that I am alive. In one piece, I'm in a world of shit, but I am alive, and I am not afraid. Again, comes back to survival, man. You just gotta get through the fire. That's all it is. It's fire. There is no right or wrong decisions. Did you die? I get it, man. Shit, man. What a fucking war movie, bro. Holy shit. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Full Metal Jacket. Talk about an unbiased look at the Vietnam War. We weren't painted as the good guys. We were just soldiers. We were one side of a fucked up coin. There were no good parts. There were no happy scenes. There was no character development arcs. Nope, none of that. It was just literally seen as a day in the life of a soldier in the Vietnam War. I like how it progressed from boot camp to going out into the field. You know, a pretty low profile base going into a more established base that's in the heart of the shit and then going straight out into the field. You know, that's to, for us to get every step of it. It did its job in showing what it takes from the moment you sign up and get your hair cut until you make your first kill. It's the only place in the world where a promotion is a bullet away and happens in an instant. The guy that's place you're taking, you only got it because he's dead. What other job or what other place in the world can you say that about besides war? The guys were definitely you know misogynistic and racist i am taking into account the time period this is supposed to depict you know this is i think before the civil rights or going on during the civil rights movement so i'm not surprised by any of it it did feel like though since they were dying for each other or would die for each other or put their life on the line for that guy standing next to him no matter his skin color that making racist jokes was the least of their worries getting offended is something that didn't really matter like i know you you would die for me so it's just a way of processing all this dumb shit that's going on we don't have time to worry about each other's feelings i want to make sure that you can wake up tomorrow and go home to your family and i can go home to mine it's twisted it's fucked and it makes sense unfortunately it makes sense there were christianity relics and symbols all throughout this movie which is kind of hypocritical considering the stuff that they did and saw and what goes on in war. You would think that'd be something that people would take into account when they're making these decisions, but no. They're, they're praying to God to that they go to heaven when they die and that they can get out of this alive. They're not praying for goodwill for their enemies. They're not praying that this war keeps going on. They're not praying that they convert or change the mind of the other side. No, it's just God, please get me through this. And they're in hell. Like to have religion in hell is such an oxymoron. And it's so hypocritical that for it to be real is fucking terrifying, actually. It really is. Green, gray, and brown dominated 
the color spectrum for this movie you know from the landscape and obviously for their uniform it, they blended in perfectly you know they were part of the environment and i do know that that's the job of camouflage they look like dirt they look like wall they look like the stuff that's torn down and just destroyed they look like the smoke you know and when you see the people around you looking like that as well it just makes being grim and sad and death so commonplace you kind of get immune to it and it, it just reinforces that it, it goes beyond being camouflage you are one with your environment there was a huge shifting ensemble cast i did see in the closing credits that that was vincent deforno fucking incredible actor he's doing amazing in the daredevil show i'm watching but shit man the way he went from being goofy silly ignorant to the way military works to being you know refined polished a good soldier being shifted all the way to someone that fucking snapped and lost his mind which i'm sure has happened man that range in the span of 30 minutes he covered it all he showed what the brutality of just training for war can do to you granted he was being a marine but you know there's a lot of marines man and i can't go on without talking about the excellent directing in this movie i can talk about the shots i can talk about the stills i can talk about the pan in of the faces i can talk about the camera placement and the angles when conversations were happening or something intense was happening basically giving a premonition of what was coming no the movement of the camera is what stood out to me the way it moved as they were walking the movement as they would advance inside of a building we've seen like shaky you know like saving private ryan house all shaky and it resembles more no this was smooth it was still it wanted you to see as someone frozen just looking at what's going on the soldiers were the movie the soldiers are the war the soldiers were the movie the distant shots when they were fighting like actively engaging the Viet Cong we never saw their faces they were like ghosts they, they had no identity and that's probably how it was fighting in the war the, you, you probably never going to see the face of the guy that you killed maybe if everything calms down and you advance but as you're actively fighting and engaging you don't know who that guy is you can't see their facial features and it makes it easier to kill them and I got all that just from the way the movie was shot all that from the angling Stanley Kubrick clearly he's mastered the art of camera movement I mean this is in what the 70s this is a late 70s early 80s movie you can tell the heart and dedication that this guy put into making this movie it was evident in every edit and every transition i don't know if this is one of his most acclaimed movies but even if it's at the lower end i have high hopes for the rest of his catalog that i gotta get into this was by far the greatest depiction of war i've ever seen i've seen saving private ryan and a couple other war movies but like i said earlier this is a day in the life this is brutal to the point no sides are picked and it did its job it portrayed war as an experience of fear and avoid and that's exactly how i feel coming out of watching this if anything in particular stood out to you in this film or there was something i might have missed please tell me about it in the comments below i hope you enjoy watching my reaction all i ask is that you leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet you can also get early access to these youtube edits on my patreon through the link in the description you guys are the best we're basically family now i know you guys know that that's it for me until next time spread peace and love i'm out